from the Psych Hub Podcast Network. Join Marjorie Morrison and Patrick Kennedy on this episode of Future of Mental Health. Hi, everyone. How you doing? So nice to see so many familiar faces. And it feels like a minute ago when we were in Boston for Future of Mental Health Care East. <laughs> so I'm excited to be back here. We uh, actually are doing another live podcast of the future mental health. I co-host that one with uh, Patrick Kennedy, who's our co-founder of Psych Hub, but he's not here. So I'm trusted to say or do whatever I want <laughs> <laughs> with, with, again, YouTube's permission, uh, a final version of it. But this will be the last, uh, last episode of this season. So I appreciate you also kind of letting us have a very informal discussion in front of you all um, and a fireside chat. And for the record, the first ever repeat guest on, on the podcast, <laughs> podcast uh, yeah. in a new role. For just some quick introductions, I'm Marjorie. I am, the, as I mentioned, the co-founder of Psych Hub. We're a mental health education and connection platform. And just a little bit about what we're setting out to do is we're really focused on a thesis of how do we move behavioral health providers from generalists to specialists. So with all of the great work that so many of you in this room are, are doing on doing that care delivery, we're really focused on how do we help from behind the scenes to help providers use evidence-based practices and really hone their craft as specialists. So we know studies show us again and again when therapists do use evidence-based interventions and they specialize, everybody wins. So I always have to, you all know this, but I always have to explain it to people outside of mental health care that we would never go see a cardiologist for a broken foot, but yet we do it in mental health all the time, right? We have different ways that we treat ADHD or an eating disorder or anxiety or insomnia, but yet 75% of us are master's level clinicians like me, unlike Dr. DeVento over here. <laughs> <laughs> and we come out of school as generalists. So we're really focused on uh, certifying and getting providers trained to better outcomes, um, the member gets better treatment in fewer sessions or the client, and it, there's a greater cost of care savings. Through our process of educating and certifying providers, we also realized we had to tackle it on both ends, and we had to educate the general public how to become informed consumers about mental health so that they would also start to push for providers, which is that perfect storm of how Jessica and I and Psych Hub and YouTube paths cross. So that's what we're going to talk about. And now I would love for, for you, Jessica, to kind of just share a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So as Marjorie suggested, I am a licensed clinical psychologist. I did uh, clinical work for about a decade, but stepped out of that about five years ago where I actually started overseeing employee mental health for the company. And people look at me now and they're like, wait, but I don't do employee mental health anymore. I work on user mental health. This is a new role to the company as of May. And people might ask, YouTube and mental health, that doesn't make sense. But we think about mental health as both a uh, vertical and a horizontal. So the vertical is the content that we see on our platform, authoritative and emotionally helpful content. That's mostly what we're talking about today. And then horizontal is how our uh, product actually affects the mental health of our users. So it's very critical that we get this right because we want to be a responsible platform and because we know users are coming, found out this week, is that we had 25 billion global views on mental health videos in 2021. 25 billion with over, thank you, with over <laughs> 2 billion monthly active users, we have a huge opportunity to meet people where they are and to bring authoritative content to those folks. And so we've got partners like Psych Hub. We have some of our other partners in the room, One Mind and NAMI, who we work with together to, to bring this to life. I mean, she told me that outside and I was like, we got to start with that stat. Because when we think about the consumer, it's, it's huge, right? How do you, and when we say a consumer, to some of you, it's your members, to some of you, it's your employees, to some of it, it's your patients. But at the end of the day, it's the end user of all this great stuff that we're talking about. Dr. Carney set me up, calling her up, you know, throwing her under the bus here because she talked about how important education is. Didn't quite mention that Psych Hub did the trainings with Neuroflow and Magellan, but that's okay. I just, you know, <laughs> giving her a hard time. I was waiting for it to come out. No, I'm teasing you. But it's really important to think about how does that end user become informed in their mental health care? And so to kind of just set the stage, 
And then when we think about all of the work and how they it's like a black box. So just think about this, you guys, for a minute. Okay, so we're all here, right? So tell me if that you can relate to this. First, for a general everyday person, you have to understand symptoms, right? How do you know if your depression is because you just lost someone in your family and you're feeling depressed and it's normal grief? How do you know if your anxiety is to the point that it's clinical and you need to go in and get some help, maybe some medication? We have diagnoses. What's the difference between psychosis and schizophrenia or borderline and bipolar? Then we have different treatment types. What's the difference, or provider types? What's the difference between a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a social worker, a married family therapist, a counselor, a peer, a coach? Uh, then we have intervention types. What's the difference between CBT and DBT and EMDR and ACT? And then you have all of these amazing digital tools that we're learning a lot about and how do they all fit in and what's a peer and what's a coach? And then when you have to finally figure that out, how do you actually get help? And then how do you find someone with your insurance? So if you think about it, is that accurate? I mean, can you all relate to that? Like, that is what our everyday people have to figure out how to navigate. So now I'd love for you to share how YouTube plays a role in that. So when we, when we know user behavior, we understand that people come to Google first to learn about information about their conditions. And uh, users, especially younger users, are turning to YouTube for a video-first content to understand every kind of stage of the patient journey. What is that information? What, what are these symptoms I'm dealing with? What does this diagnosis mean? How do I access service and care? How do I get treatment? We also know that in tandem with coming to learn uh, authoritative information, they come to hear personal stories, which is so important in the user journey and so important for addressing stigma, for increasing help-seeking seek, help behaviors, and for folks to feel less isolated. To know that they're not alone in the journey and feel less isolated is a huge protective factor, as you all know, in, in the mental health care journey. And so YouTube does has a role to play in both of those. We have a couple of product features that I can mention now, if that works. Please. So when you search for, say, like anxiety or depression, any kind of condition specific, you'll get like an authoritative health shelf for our top searched mental health conditions on our platform. The shelf shows an authoritative designation, meaning this is from an accredited hospital. This is, and soon it's going to mark if this is a licensed mental health professional, which, uh, Psychob has a role to play in as well. And uh, other kind of nonprofits and advocacy groups can show up on this shelf. It helps users make an informed decision about the credibility of the voice that is speaking to them. I don't know if you all saw, there was, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it was a Wall Street Journal article about uh, users going to, you know, TikTok and Instagram for medical information. Well, at least YouTube, we're trying to help users make an informed decision about the content that they're consuming. We also launched just in September a personal stories shelf. So similarly, when you're searching for anxiety, depression, other conditions, you'll see a shelf that pops up that says personal stories. And these are all rated by medical reviewers to make sure they're authentic and not harmful to our users. And it's information about folks' lived experience. And if we think about meeting our youngest users where they are, that peer-to-peer -peer interaction, Sometimes they go to that first before they're going to the authoritative source. So it's really important that we get both of these pieces of information out there. It has been fascinating for, for Psyche. We're about three and a half years old to learn through YouTube because you really get a pulse on what people are searching for, what they're looking for. Like, I'm really proud of the fact that we average around a million views a month. But it kind of pales in comparison to her billions that <laughs> she's putting out there. It is very interesting to, to get a sense of where are people at? What kinds of things are they looking for? Right? What are the different demographics? There's a lot. So I'm grateful that we get to have this conversation because I really want to challenge all of you to be thinking about how do you cut through the noise? How do we make information as accessible as possible to the people that are receiving it? Right. And then cutting, not to say that there are bad apples, but you know, not, not everybody has the same quality of rigor in their, in their treatment. Right. So what do you say is like a way that YouTube kind of thinks about that? Like, do you ever get content that you have to kind of push to the side or push down? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So from our responsibility efforts, we have a four R's framework, and I'm going to go through each of these R's to talk about how we treat content on our platform. So rewarding content is content that is high quality, high value. We do monetize that and we reward creators for creating that content. And we raise 
high quality content as well. So similarly, like that authoritative health shelf, for example, is a way that we raise good high quality content like Psychubs. And then we remove violative content from our platform. So an example of this in the mental health space is we remove anything that glorifies or promotes suicide, age gate, a lot of content that could be harmful for our youngest users. And then we uh, reduce low quality content. So we do have authoritative ranking in our app. And so we, we listen to those signals and that is, yeah, sort of how we address it. So we're going to share something that we haven't, that PsychUp hasn't gone public with yet. Well, we have it like sort of a very high level and then, and then you'll understand and we'll talk about how potentially all of you can play an important role in this too. So we are launching PsychUp Connect, which is a, that next step for us from when you go from education to connecting to care. And it has been an effort that we have been working with our scientific advisory board, which is why I can tease Dr. Carney because she's on it, but it is the chief medical officers or the, and or the chief medical officers of behavioral health of Anthem Elevance. Sorry, I know them in alphabetical order. Aetna, Cigna, Centene, Humana, Optum, Molina, Beacon, Magellan, and Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, repping the 34 Blues and YouTube and Google. And uh, we've been working on this for about a year. And why it really plays a role is what we're trying to do is educate the everyday consumer and then connect them to the right care for them that takes their insurance. And a lot of these larger, I use the word aggregators, don't be mad at me if you don't consider yourself an aggregator, but you know, you see some of them on here and there's a lot of them. These large groups are really solving a lot of the problems out there because what happens is people will go to a, a single shingle and call one and can't get in and call another. And those that are specialized on our platform will get higher connection to there. And we're all working, really working together on this pretty big initiative. And so I I say that is, is that we want you to remember all this, but we also want you to make sure that you're thinking about how is it that you're educating your members? How, How do we use YouTube that's collecting all of these, not collecting, engaging all of these consumers (laughs) to the tune of billions who go there and watch this content. And there is that care out there. I mean, we, we're seeing it, right? So there's a lot of noise. People get stuck down the wrong lane. So we're always open to hearing about, you know, ideas that you have or people that want to be part of the process to make it more s- seamless. But yeah. we can see that YouTube, we're super grateful that they've been at this table with us from the beginning at, you know, how are we using content, short content. Do you want to talk a little bit about the shorts? Yeah, shorts is a really, I don't know if you all know YouTube shorts product, but it's similar to like TikTok or Instagram reels. It is 60 second vertical content. Like if you've tested out on your phone right now, you can go to YouTube app, go to the, there's a shorts button at the very bottom and you can even search for anxiety and depression. And right now you can see shorts content from authoritative sources pop up and that's really engaging, quick, little nuggets of information. Yes, it's hard to get really good information in 60 seconds. PsychHub is an example of somebody who does it well. So you can look at PsychHub shorts as a prime example of good ways to do this. But this is going to grab where, especially our younger users. Our younger users, Gen Z, millennials, are really consuming this shorts content as a way of entertainment. But we also know that these younger users are more open to the conversation about mental health. They don't shy away from the conversation. They welcome it into their lives. And some of them even expect it to be a part of that overarching narrative. Of course, stigma is still going to exist. And I I, I know that it's going to look different for each user. And it's going to look different, especially outside of the United States. But uh, certainly these younger users are leaned into this conversation more so than their older counterparts. That shorts player is where they're going. They're going to swipe. They get to learn some tips about anxiety. They get to learn how to seek help, how to talk to a friend who's suicidal in really easy, short, digestible ways. And so it's really exciting to see partners like PsychHub leaning into that space. And also that shorts content can sometimes drive subscribers to your channel, which then drives them back to the longer form content where uh, more of that, that meatier information might live. So that's why we were excited to kind of tackle this subject with you because it's a little different than what you're probably used to thinking. I mean, how many people came up to us this morning and said, oh, my kids are on YouTube all the time. 
I think sometimes we forget almost that YouTube is, is owned by Google, right? It's yes. a subsidiary. It's, 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 it's part of Google, yeah. And so Google is the number one search engine in the world, and YouTube is the second. And I know like a lot of people now, young, are really, what would you say, like 30 and under? I don't know. Go to YouTube, and that's where they're going to get information. So it's really... I mean, it's funny because if we look at user demographic of who's coming to YouTube, it's actually all ages because it's not just the Gen Zs, the millennials who are video first consumers. But you also have parents of these generations who are coming to the platform to learn for themselves, but to learn about how to help their kids. So we also have a lot of content, like one of our partners, ChildMind, that drives a lot of content information to parents about how to help the younger users who we know are in the most acute mental health crisis that we've seen with the mental health pandemic falling lockstep with the COVID pandemic. And what we're really excited about, too, about Psych Hub Connect is that I'm taking YouTube's words, but a lot of our content, hundreds and hundreds of our videos will be on the Connect platform, but they're hosted on YouTube. So, you know, now we're looking at YouTube, not just as a place that people can go, but, and I, I say this and I told Jessica, I was going to do this. I encourage all of you to develop YouTube channels. I think that it is a really good way to kind of get your own sort of DNA of whatever it is of your organizations kind of out there and get that information. Happy to mentor anyone on that. I know the more elevated authoritative content we can have, the better we all, we all win. But I love this notion of YouTube content can also sit other places. And so when you think about it like that, we could have like for Psych Hub, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, right? So someone could watch what is ADHD and then medications for ADHD, treatment types for ADHD, how to support someone for ADHD, you know, on these kind of deeper type of algorithms. Well, you know, who else is also using YouTube is providers in their practice. Providers look for video content. And a lot of uh, our like, top like mental health experts that we, like individual licensed folks who are creating content say, I found myself repeating and saying the same things in my practice over and over again. And so I turned to YouTube to create this content that's evergreen so I can give it to my patients. And so a lot of providers are looking for this to educate their patients as well, which is kind of how the tie-in with Psych Hub Connect is so cool. Yeah. So I know we're out of time. I could like talk to her all day because I really, I, I just think it's a fascinating other twist to mental health, right? Which is, really coming at it from where people are short and sometimes long. You have some long content on there too, but it's a, it's a, it was once when we very first started our partnership, they said, we're the world's Petri dish. And I thought about that as like, you do get to try things out. You know, we do a lot of animated content because we can control diversity. We use different accents, color, size, clothing, all that. Now, granted, I understand that this is all we do at Psych We develop content. So it's, it's, easy for us in the sense that's what we do, but it is fascinating to think about the role of an informed consumer and how we want people, just like if you were sick, you go on the internet and you're learning. If you get diagnosed with something, you learn, and now you are are taking a much more active role in your treatment. And when we can get people on the mental health journey owning what their role is in it, we'll see much better outcomes in treatment. We... We're grateful for our partnership and uh, I'm glad we got to spend some time with you. So thank you. As always, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you enjoyed the show, drop us a review. If you haven't already, subscribe to our podcast for the latest episode. For the latest insights, check us out at psychhub.com.